Hey guys, this is Dizzy Dizzy Dino here, and today I want to take a look at the new system that just got added to the game. This is Skill Transfer, Skill Inheritance. So what is Skill Transfer? Skill Transfer is just the ability to give a skill from one monster to another, effectively letting one monster hold two skills. Sounds pretty awesome, right? Like for instance, here's Lakshmi with two skills. Skill 1, her usual skill, and Skill 2 which is Erd skill, changing orbs to fire, water, and heal. Lakshmi normally has a pretty lackluster skill. She uh, deals damage to the enemy, heals some, and makes hearts. Doesn't really help too much. It's okay in some situations, but I can give her a really huge skill. I can give her uh, a board change that she can work off of. But you'll notice the cooldown on this skill is massive. It's 21 right now because it's actually not maxed out. But what it, it her cooldown is eight. Erd's cooldown here is 13, adds them together, you get 21. That's the first drawback to this. It adds the cooldown from the second monster to make your max cooldown. But before that, let's go ahead and take a look at who gets skill inheritance. First of all, any monster can receive a skill from another monster. It doesn't matter what monster you are. I can give a skill to Goemon here. I can give a skill to my master, King Mastering if I wanted, you know. I could have King Mastering here uh, do a Rodin skill. I could give Rodin to King Mastering if I wanted. Uh, I could give... Um, I could take Archangel Lucy here, who does a 200x dark attack. Uh, I could give that to my bean, and instead of having a bean punch, I could have a falcon punch. I mean, you know, a lot of options open up for uh, team building, because, you know, not only that, uh, if you need a shield on a team, this isn't color specific, this is just a shield. I can give Susano's three turn 50% haste shield to, uh, to anybody, to any team that needs a shield. I can give a bind clear to any team that needs a bind clear. Uh, it sounds great, but... To give your skill, there are some requirements, and this is right out of the game here. So, uh, this picture right here that you see. Um, to give your skill, you have to have come, the monster has to have come from the rare machine or the collab machine. So, if I roll a monster from the rare egg machine, if I roll a monster from Final Fantasy, I can inherit its skill. Almost all the time. The monster also has to be a 5-star monster. It doesn't have to come out of the machine at 5-star but it has to be able to evolve to 5-star. For instance, Exahydra here is only 4-star, so if I wanted to give a delay to a team, I would be screwed. But not exactly, because although it came out of the machine as a sad silver egg 4-star, uh, I can evolve it into a 5-star form, which means I'm saved. At, with a 5-star form, I can then give it skill away. It has to be out of the rare machine, it has to have a 5-star form, and it has to have max level and all of its awakenings those are the requirements so once you do that the receiving monster will get the two skills but one will be added onto the other for cooldown so let, let's just try one real quick it'll be easier when you see it so let's say i have horus here who uh, is a match as a rainbow leader right i have to match four out of five colors notoriously his skill sucks for himself i mean let's face it he enhances fire orbs when you really want four or five colors on the board. Enhancing fire orbs is not the best thing you can have. But he's blessed with a low cooldown. Four turn cooldown, which in the past helped for the last part of the skill, activating a skill every uh, to get a buff, right? But a low cooldown also means easy pickings for inheritance. Let's give Horus Light Kali's skill so he can make a board for himself. Light Kali makes... Um, changes your board to give you a board of three of at least three of every color so we don't have to use an ultimate evolved Kali because we just need Kali as long as she has five stars here's a at least a five star Kali that's max level max awoken so let's take that Kali and you see the gold star next to these monsters when you see a gold star next to a monster that means that it's eligible that means that it came out of the rare machine or the collab machine is at least five star rarity is max level and is max awoken so it's a quick way to see what you can inherit and what you can not potentially inherit but what you can currently inherit or transfer excuse me so we just go to skill transfer or remove right here we select who we want to give it to 
and it tells you that as much right here. And then you see these little icons underneath everybody. That tells you the cost for, for skill transfer in Tons. Tons are a new monster that got introduced to the game. Let's go ahead and select Light Kali right here. I'm going to select Kali, and you'll see these, these are what it require. These came out of the dungeon we just had, the Tan dungeon. It's a Tan infestation, kind of like Tamandra infestation. And Tons are pretty much to enhance as Tamandras are to Awakenings. You can't in, you can't transfer without Tons. You can't awaken without Tamandras. Uh, and they come from their own specific little infestation dungeon right now, which we're going to be getting occasionally. It's a very easy dungeon. They look like little Snorlaxes. Uh, but it'll tell you, you usually need two of one color and two of another, or four of one color, and then two million coins. That's the cost. So we're going to give Horus, who had a four-turn skill, Kali, who has a seven-turn skill, and it's going to become an 11 turn skill her seven turn skill is going to become an 11 turn skill that's because that's four plus seven and that gives us light collie so we're just gonna hit it boom all right so how do we use it we have two skills now but how does it work let's try it out really fast whoops all right let's just hop into an endless here and i'm gonna grab a horus friend and you'll notice I'm gonna go into the blank team. This team has four skill boosts. Pay attention to that, right? Four skill boosts. So I'm gonna enter the dungeon. And since Horus' skill is on a four cooldown, then naturally you would expect Horus' skill to be available, right? And as you'd expect, it is. This Horus on the right does not have a skill transfer to it. So it's just this regular skill, fully charged in four turns. Mine looks exactly the same, but only it says you skill one and underneath it, it gives me information about Kali's skill, fully charged in seven turns. I'm not gonna get an option which skill to use. Just like as if my skills were turned off, I can only tell this hero, to this card to use its skill. So let's take a look at it as if it was like a, a meter charging up. That's the best analogy I think for it. Like a cooldown meter charging up, maybe like Cyan from Final Fantasy three or six, or like uh, a power-up bar in Gradius or Parodius or uh, Life Force. You have pretty much a bar like this, and excuse the MS Paint, I apologize. Um, you have a bar like this, right? And your cooldown is here at zero. This is like where you would start as it, as it uh, charges up. So uh, Horus is sitting, Horus's skill is a four cooldown, right? But the Kali skill is an 11 cooldown. I mean, it's a 7 cooldown, but it adds on top of the 4 to make 11, right? Because Horus' skill goes up to the 4, and then Kali's skill goes up to here, right? That's 7 turns, that's Kali's skill. Um, so with 4 skill boosts, the meter starts filled up to the 4, right? 4 turns have automatically been added on. And boom, we're sitting here at four right now. So that means I can use Horus's skill, or like, or I, if I use Horus's skill right now and I use it, boom. Now this resets back to zero. We're sitting back at zero now, right? Um, we're sitting back at zero, and now if I take one turn, we're sitting at one. And as you can see here, I have three turns until Reversal Flame is up again. That's Horus's skill. If I make another match, boom, that's two turns. Now we're sitting at two. Uh, I'll make another match. Boom, we're at three. And then I'll make another match. And boom, we're at four. We're charged all the way back up to four. We have access to Horus skill again. In fact, for the next seven turns, as I take turns, we'll have access to Horus' skill this whole time. At any once, it, at any time during this time though that I'm charging up between turns four and eleven, at any time during here, I can use a skill. If I press Horus, it will use this skill, Horus' original skill, and then it will reset the cooldown, whoosh, back to zero. Uh, if the meter 
goes and goes and goes. At any time during this time right now, if I use a skill, it's Horus's skill, right? And it chart stops at zero. But once it hits 11, that's your max cooldown. As soon as you hit 11, boom, you lose access to Horus's skill. And the skill transforms into Kali's skill. And since this is your max cooldown, it doesn't matter how many more turns pass. This is your maximum. You'll sit at Kali's skill until you use it. Then your cooldown shoots back to zero and you have no skill available for four turns again. And then after four turns have passed, then boom, you get access to Horus again. And then it starts over. So right now, Horus is active. Right now I'm sitting right here at four. This is where my cooldown's at right now, at four. I'm gonna go ahead and just take seven turns. So that's six turns left. And as you can see, six turns until the skill's ready. Five turns. At any time now, I can use Horus's skill. Four turns, and Reversal Flame is available. Three turns, as soon as it processes, and Reversal Flame is still available. Two turns, Reversal Flame still available. One turn, Reversal Flame still available. And now, this is the turn it happens, boom. Five colored alchemy available. It says reversal flame in four turns because that's if I were to use this skill two. But now it has switched over and it'll tell me use skill two fully charged in 11 turns, right? Now if I use this skill, boom, there's Elkali skill. Horus has dropped back to zero and the process starts over. And now I have an Elkali board. Uh, now I have an Elkali board. So that's how this process works. So you don't get to choose which skill you use, unfortunately. That's one of the drawbacks, and depending on how you choose to use this system, you will be forced to pay attention to your cooldowns more. It's one more thing you have to pay attention to. It adds an extra layer of skill onto the game because you're juggling cooldowns, but as a benefit, you get access to a second active. So, you don't have to have the monster you feed max skill. Uh, for example, right now I have Erd inherited onto Lakshmi. You'll see Lakshmi here, right? She has access to Erd. And look, I have a couple Erds. I could have inherited this Erd, but then I would have had to use nine Tamadras. Instead, if I inherit this Erd, I only need six Tamadras. She, she still satisfies all the requirements. She is a five-star god. She's out of the uh, rare machine. She's fully awoken. She's max level. So she has the gold star. So I can inherit this. And you'll notice she's not max skill yet. So she gets a 13 plus the, uh, plus the 8 unlocks me to 21. But at any time, that monster's still in my box. I can just grab this Erd at any time. I can try to skill her up. I can just feed her whatever I want to skill. I'm just going to feed her a pea real quick. I can skill her up, and... She goes up to 3, and now if we go and check on Lakshmi here, her max cooldown should say 20. So just like that, you can just keep skilling it up in your box. So, you know, that's one thing you would want to use. Lakshmi, for instance, you know, her team, I don't own a board change for her team. And I don't own any blue board changers that make hearts. But Erd, even though she's a red card, she makes fire, water, and heal. That works perfectly on a water team. Just like uh, I could inherit Frere here to a water team. Just fine. I could inherit... Um, I could inherit Verdandy onto a fire or a wood team just fine. So like, you know, cards can be used outside of where you would normally think to use them. Delays go anywhere, right? Um, but you got to be careful because there's not that many, like you start to realize there's not that many inheritable delays, there's not that many inheritable gravities, things like that. But cards with low cooldowns begin to have a greater value because a card with a low cooldown, you can essentially use it for its, uh, its awakenings and its stats and give it any skill you want. Like say Minerva here. I want a machine killer, god killer that's bind immune and maybe bring some jammer, uh, jammer resist to me. Her skill has a three cooldown when it's maxed out. I can give her any skill I want. Essentially what I have here is a fire god devil that has god killer, machine killer, and is bind immune ready to hold any skill I want. I can just give it, if I want to delay with those abilities, how about a god killer, yeah, how about a god killer, machine killer, um, 
How about a god killer machine killer that's bind immune, that has 40% jammer resist, that also brings a 5 turn delay to the team? I can put Orochi on it, I can put uh, Zeta Hydra, or I can put a bind clear on it. She's bind immune, right? What better than a bind clear, bind, a, an active bind clear on somebody that's bind immune? I found a use for Light Metatron. I can throw Light Metatron on her. Five turns to do a three turn uh, bind clear. Now, instead of having Metatron, I can have it for fire and I have a fire card that's bind immune, god killer, machine killer. That also is a three turn bind clear on essentially eight cooldown, three plus five. That's great. So there's options. And before I go real quick, I want to keep this short, but I know it's a little long already. I want to keep it kind of short, but I want to talk about one more use that skill inheritance has that's very interesting. I thought was very interesting. And that's inheriting the same skill onto itself. I mean, let's think about that. Why would you want to do that? Let's say I inherited El Kali onto El Kali, right? Or here, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll do El Kali on, well, we'll say D Kali onto D Kali. It's the same exact thing. But let's say D Kali onto D Kali. Why would I inherit? D Why would somebody ever do that? Let's, uh, let's just take a look at it real quick. So if you had, here's the meter, right? And here's zero. Here is seven for D Kali skill, right? And now if we were to inherit herself onto herself, that would put another D Kali skill right here at 14. So that means between zero and seven, right? Between zero and seven, nothing. Once I hit seven, D Kali skill is up. And once I hit 14, I lose active, I lose access to D Kali and gain access to D Kali. Seems kind of pointless. But let's say I'm charging up, right? Let's say, uh, let's say here's my meter. I'm charging up. I pass seven. Now I gain access to D Kali. Let's say I'm here at 10, right? And I go into a floor and get hit by a three turn skill delay. Now, where am I? Boom, I'm back at seven. I still have access to D Kali. Let's say I've charged all, now let's see, like that's, but that's for any skill, uh, that's for any skill inheritance. Let's say now I've charged all the way up to 14 and I have access to D Kali. I get hit with a three turn skill delay now. Boom, I get knocked back to 11. I lose access. I lose access to D Kali, but I gain access to D Kali. So inheriting the same skill onto itself gives you a hard buffer against skill delay, essentially defense against skill delay. I mean, inheritance in itself is a kind of buffer against skill delay, but inheriting the same skill ensures that you'll always have access to that skill as long as you charged up enough turns over what the skill delay is. But that's pretty much a quick look at skill delay. I did another video, it's like twice as long, where I go into more specific teams and more examples. Uh, you can check that out if you want. I'll probably upload that if I decide to. Otherwise, if you're still confused about skill inheritance, skill transfer, you have any questions about it, please feel free to swing by the stream. I stream five days a week. I stream Tuesday, Wednesdays from 4 p.m. till 10 p.m and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 6 p.m. till midnight. That's Pacific Standard Time. We usually sometimes, we, often we go later too. I, I mainly stream pad, like 90% of the time I'm streaming pad. Um, the community is amazing. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, no, even if you're totally new to the game and you, you're just totally confused, don't be intimidated, come by. We help everybody from like rank tens all the way up to like, you know, we have people in like the seven and eight hundreds in the room. Um, if you have any questions at all, need help building teams, stuck on a dungeon, don't quite know what to do at your rank, come by. I'm at twitch.tv slash dizzydizzydino. Not Puzzle Dizzy, that's just my YouTube channel. I'm also on Twitter at dizzydizzydino. I'll have a link down below. You guys can check it out. We also do giveaways at the end of every month for the end of month Godfest. So if you swing by the stream, you just have to be in the stream at the end of the month. Uh, you'll see directions in the stream. It'll be randomly throughout. So for Player's Choice Godfest this month, at the end of the month, we're going to be giving away gift cards. We do gift cards at the end of every month. We do other random giveaways throughout the month too, all the time. So do swing by Twitter, uh, twitch.tv slash dizzydizzydino. And again, thanks so much guys for watching this video. I'm going to be back on YouTube posting more guides soon in the next week. So look out for that. Thank you guys. I'm out. Bye.